So now we are at the cloister of the Girona Cathedral and uh, we're using every little door, every little threshold, every little steps to, to keep bringing us back to this state of clear consciousness. And then the first thing you notice is like the whole floor is paved with, it's basically, this is basically a graveyard. All these are tombs. Uh, people wanted to be uh, buried in in this type of places for many reasons. You know, there were social and, and political reasons. And but uh, from the point of view of the yogis, uh, of let's say of the practitioners, one one reason is like the remains would be stepped by people, which in a sense is a is an act of humbleness. And also because the remains will be stepped by people who come in a high state of. Um, of faith and devotion. And that would be good for the people who are walking or for the person who's buried? For the person who's buried. The, the way in, the, in which uh, cloisters are built which is no different uh, in a sense the way that um, stone circles are built or you know basically the a, te- a church or a temple you know it also will be the space that is within so it's also built as a symphony of music there's actually a specific german author who has done some research on this and uh, the san cugat uh, cloister yeah. about the musicality how different oh, yes. animals were yeah? Okay. Uh, yes, they had a, an exhibit here during the Tomte de Flore. Okay. And the, the, the flowers, each one, each set of flowers was linked to uh, a melody. Yeah, okay. And it explained the melody was based on his interpretation of the directions, the, animal. the animals, yeah. the this and the that, that he had understood that there was a particular melody for this yeah. space. So, you know, in a, in a more simple way, we can just say that each of these pillars as we walk are like um, chords of a musical, like a string uh, musical instrument, for example, just to give an image, no? And as we walk by in a state of consciousness, we gradually somehow they are being played. It's not that we have to listen to anything specific, we might, but it's just basically this is tuning and tuning the place and tuning and tuning our consciousness. So we said, if we walk, if we walk clockwise, it's more of a rebuilding and regenerating of our energy field. So we just, just relaxly we walk. One, and uh, as we were saying, as we were coming up here, which didn't get recorded, but uh, first we just take a moment and uh, connect with the place by smiling to the earth and smiling to the heavens and smiling to the to the ancestors and the community. And through by feeling the, this vibrating rhythm this, uh, of the breath, we come to feel the vibrating rim- rhythm of the breath of the place itself. Okay, so just take a moment to do this. We don't need to close our eyes or anything, we just, you know, just relax. So we don't look suspicious. And then as we walk, we, uh, to, to help the balancing of the hemispheres of the brain, what we call also in, in the yoga, it's called the Ida and the Pingala, we uh, unite our index and our thumbs very like lightly, and we just walk around once. becoming aware of our own awareness as we walk with a nice smile.
And as we walk without you know, any specific purpose of doing any activation or anything, just, just walking, we observe, as we were saying, as we were coming towards uh, also the, the cathedral from your house, we observe maybe some minor changes on the density of the air as we walk. And when we encounter those, often implies that uh, we, it's better that we stop for a moment, and we just take a breath, to, to get harmonized with the new space we're crossing. As we, as we come here into this corner, like the energy is different. So we just take a moment, breathe, and then keep walking. Should we sit there better? No, better here. Then part of being in a, in a structure that somehow has a circular nature, even if a cloister is square, has a circular nature because people walk around, you know, you could say in circles basically. Yeah. And it's that has both the dynamic aspect that is made by people walking and the static aspect which is the building. No? So part of the, of, of the experience of being in a cloister is also just sitting quietly and observing the dynamism that is generated by people. So just we take a moment process of approaching a, a sacred site as we did today we started it in, in your house as we want to go out we stopped for a moment and we just did a centering practice and uh, the first thing we encountered when we went out was this very noisy very uh, crowded street so what we perceived was that there were a set of layers of filters that if we were mindful of them and we perceived them beyond what was our first impression. As you said, your first impression was just to run as quickly as you could. To get through it all. To get through it all. Not notice anything. Notice. So the approach we took was the opposite. We just tried to become aware of ourselves. And then just everything we approach, just be aware of that. So first we encountered that. And uh, the first thing we talked about was we compared the the busy street with a beautiful busy forest and how each of those persons who was walking, each of those animals, each of those birds that were flying, the water in the river, the cars passing by, it was like, like each of those leaves that yesterday were like moving in the fresh air of the, of the afternoon. And we said that it was very useful to bring the attention to the feet and to feel the expansion of the earth energy on itself and up through us and recognize that that was also happening in each of the things that was surrounding us. That the energy 
was by its ascending nature was calling down the descending energy from the heavens okay what we call the the wisdom realm the union of those was giving as a result of that creative energy that it's the base over which the mind starts becoming calmer so now in this place here we can just feel that calmness that calmness it's the substrate like the the foundation over which which we start approaching the sacred site if there's no calmness we're not approaching the sacred site we're approaching the physical building and that might have many wonderful things that happen as we go in our visit but it's through that experiencing of that first layers of calmness calmness we start realizing oh we're approaching something now we recognize we have entered into that self-revealing threshold and once that first glimpse of recognition has occurred then everything that happens after that we start we start like appreciating very much as little pointers that show us the way to the center of the sacred temple which is not just the physical center but is that pulsating heart the pulsating heart from where the life of life emanates that process uh, we said also like uh, Rumi put it very nicely it says the heart has ears to hear what the mind cannot understand so it's by bringing the senses, more the subtle senses, to the union with their objects without judging, when we start appreciating more and more what's happening and appreciating how that's guiding us through the process into that pulsating heart, which is in itself the essence of the temple. You spoke about feeling the beginning to feel the, the this interconnection, this energy, this pulsing, pulsating heart mm. as we're approaching from some distance. Yeah. The, the yeah. sensation of Yeah, exactly. That's good. thank you. As as you start approaching the first thing is like you mark an intention. So the intention somehow points that you you have and you have recognized the entrance through the threshold. Then the mind starts coming down. You start recognizing the the energy and the consciousness of the the, the awareness of of the surroundings through you and through the people, the things inhabit there. And then the next step, you come to recognize that how did you call it? Um, what you just told me? Pulsating. Yeah, but the pulsating, like the energy of the like the you you said. Can you say again what you said? No. <laughs> Uh, let's see, you said become what? aware of the, the energy? Yeah, you start, okay. you start becoming aware of the energy of the place you're going to. Yes. In this case, we're going up the street, and suddenly it's not just us, it's not just the place, and the people, it's like, oh, now I feel, even like if I'm a kilometer away, I feel the place I'm going to. I start feeling this energy that this place emanates, and as I'm approaching it, it feels like the intensity of this place increases both in quantity and in quality. Okay. So this is very important. As we're approaching that, then we stopped, we set to walk in a specific way, well connected to the earth, well connected to the heavens, you know, with a, with a finger touching like this. Once we start sensing that pulsating heart, that it's just, it might just be a sensation of of more energy that emanates from the sacred side where, towards going, we, s we say that the two lateral veins of the central channel, basically two aspects of the breath, inhalation and exhalation, and being, are being harmonized. And the blessings that emanate from this pulsating heart are being rained directly into the central channel. As this is deepening, we start feeling more and more the, 
that sense of calmness. And the beginning is calmness, but then that calmness turns into a specific type of vitality. The way we came up to the cathedral, hmm. the first thing we saw on that corner as we were going up some stairs was uh, Mary, the statue of Mary with the baby. Yeah, yeah, that was very nice. Huh? When we're approaching a temple, when we're doing anything, once we have connected with the state, what we call the receptive mind, we, we have this advantage that, you know, the universe, or you want to call it the surroundings, give us little keys on how to approach things to maximize our experience, if we, you could call it maximizing. In this case, what we saw was that up the little uh, uphill was Mary, like a very beautiful statue of Mary holding the baby. Okay, and the baby this is nice. Maybe you put a picture or something. The baby is extending its right arm and has its palm on the center of the chest of Mary, which has a star. Mm -hmm. okay. And that star is like the the knot of a, of a cape, you know. Mm -hmm. The cape represents the universe because the universe is it's her body. And that star represents like the essence of that, which is what the baby is pointing to. It's like, come up here, but come with your mind in your heart. So that means come without pretensions, come without demanding, just come as you are. Mm -hmm. And we also sense there that the energy was so right, so exquisite at that point, that we didn't need to do too much more, you know? You said it would be enough to stop right there. Yeah, it would be enough just to stop right there. Sometimes it's, you know, there's different layers, and not because you get closer to the center, the experience is going to be better, you know? Very often it's a very good idea to know where to stop. Mm -hmm. just, oh, this is exceptional as it is, you know? It's like keep eating, you know? It's like, you don't need to finish the whole pot. Maybe with the little plate you had, it was already very good. You know? That's okay. Yeah. yeah. The, the process of, of deepening into this experience has a lot to do with the process of uh, an aware union of the sensory uh, elements like the, the sense of ear, the, sen the sense of hearing, excuse me, the sense of smell, the sense of with their objects. Mm -hmm. <coughs> like for example, we reached there the corner and there was this uh, gentleman playing this, this little steel drum, steel drum no? very beautiful sound. Yeah. So there was this freshness of the breeze coming, pushing in, out. So it's through the aware recognition of this uh, symphonies of elements that we start perceiving the background. Okay, it's through the busyness of the absolute that we perceive the absolute. Through the busyness of the absolute yeah. that we perceive the absolute. Yeah. That's, that's a method. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. So that, that method is very good for us because it's like we live busy, we live busy lives. So you know, you are anywhere and it's like we went out the to the street and what could have seemed like, oh man, there's so many people here, I hate this. It's like, then you recognize that all this, or you know, it's all this is creative energy and it's like wonderful expression of, of the mind of God in the form of us, human beings and our activity, you know? So suddenly from this busyness, we go into this state of more subtle. And it is very important because uh, this relationship of intimacy we are looking with prana and with vital force has to be cultivated. It's not something that can be demanded. Because, you know, love, it's what, what uh, an affection and reverence is what empowers this process of self-recognition. close to that in nature. 
visiting a sacred site in nature, mm. I'm much more aware of, I can feel the, the changes in the energy and stuff. I've written about that in places we've been in Wales and other places, but I find it much harder in an urban setting. Mm. I get drawn out into engagement with what I'm seeing and hearing and people and action and activity and I, I'm much less I don't know. I'm, I'm just much less present somehow. Mm. Much less still. Yeah, that's natural, no? That's why, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, why you practice. That's why you practice. <laughs> yeah, because nature ha has a right, that's vibration of, of uh, of harmony in itself, okay. versus you know human uh, environments very often are very distorted because of this cursive thought, like uh, the mind, what's being experienced, like uh, and all the things that come with us humans. No? So finding the divine in the human, it's it's very um, it's very precious, so, and then we start perceiving like also. Um, the, the, natu the nature within everything that uh, it seems busy. Mm. That's an important lesson. I think that there's much, I do much more evaluation, evaluative judgment uh, when I'm with people in an urban setting. Yeah. Like, oh, but what they're wearing, oh, how they're talking, oh, what they look like. Well, and I don't do that when I see a tree. Yeah. I say, oh, it's got this thing on it, or it's got a crack in it, or, but there's no evaluation, there's no judgment about, oh, that, you know, like, like I do automatically with yeah. people or, or places that are human-made. Mm -hmm. Then what you want to do is just go and sit at a bench somewhere, because when you are, the Basically, the difference is like when you go out to nature, you are much more with a receptive state of mind. Mm -hmm. So what I'm uh, suggesting is just to practice a receptive state of mind, sitting in a bench by the river, seeing people. On the metro. On the metro, you know, in Paseo Gracia train station. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we walk now counterclockwise okay. and see if we can observe, or just, you know, just walk. Now we walk counterclockwise. stop here for a moment and let's do a little practice of uniting the it's listening to the drops uh, let's try to Disassociate from the other sounds and just associate with the sound of the water. And specifically with the sound of the water, the moment the drop hits the water. There's like a very specific moment in which we can actually perceive like a little spark. It's water hitting water, but what you might perceive is a spark. Can you like pinpoint that moment? So 
So once you really like, it's like the tip of a needle, no? It's a very, very, very tiny moment, very specific. So now you go inside of that very specific moment. And then you just let go. 